It's time to boldly go where no man has gone before. And that is into an opening of the new 40th anniversary steelbook edition for Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock. Yes, this is the Amazon exclusive one that does come with the poster and the booklet. Let's hope, anyway. We'll find out when we open it. But, yeah, we're going to open it now. You can't really see it because of the light. Look, there we go. There it is. There's the baby. Sort of very reflective. But let's get into it. So welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my Steelbook opening video. A new Steelbook opening video for this release of Star Trek Search for Scott Spock. 40 years, 40 years this year for this movie. Wow. That's crazy. That is crazy. Um, and I think it's going back into cinemas and things like that. So this release here has been done for that anniversary of this film so it's a very random release in that no still books have been done for the other star trek films recently since they've had 4k upgrades i do have all the still books for the star trek films that came prior um, and this is my other star trek 3 to search for spock one just there it's still sealed um, not for any reason, monetary value, but I have them on standard release. Um, and then I picked up all these still books, very cheap, a lot of them, um, along the way a few years ago. It took a little while to get them all, but I got there in the end with only the Wrath of Khan. I think that cost me 17 quid at the time, which was cheap for it. I caught just an odd one popping up on Amazon, ordered it, bam, had it, 17 quid. So anyway, so this one here, to be honest, I was humming and hiring as to whether to get it or not. Not. ultimately obviously I did take the plunge into this um, I think I've got a controversial take on this film when it comes to ranking these movies we'll talk about that after we've opened it up but let's open it up and take a look um, now it is a 4k and blu-ray within and it does say 40th anniversary across the top now this is my second time at filming this because I had to cut away and go under natural light to actually be able to read this stuff here because under the sort of light in, in this room which is more atmospheric shall we say um, I can't read it so let's jump to that now okay so I know this is pretty bad but to actually read this I've actually had to come under natural light we'll talk about that in a minute and why so the special features on here commentary by director Leonard Nimoy writer producer Harve Bennett Director of Photography, Charles Cornell, and Robin Curtis, who played Savick in the film. And also a commentary by Ronald D. Moore and Michael Taylor. Blu-ray exclusives, Industrial Light and Magic, the visual effects of Star Trek. Um, Spock of the Early Years, Star Trek and the Science Fiction Museum, and Hall of Fame and more. So it doesn't sound like there's actually anything new on there. Um, but yes, but it's got Dolby Audio, Dolby Vision... Um, etc etc and a wealth of um, lat subtitles and languages that sort of thing um, over the span of the two discs so let me go back to where I was and let's get this open so there we go we've had a look at the back and what what exactly is on there um, very briefly at least anyway so let's get this little beauty opened and you know it's one of these cases where when you see the photo for this steel book, it doesn't look that great, to be honest with you. But then in hand, I think it's a completely different story. So with the J card there, as you can see, well, the glue that they've used is very minimal. It's just sort of fallen off in my hand. So that's the J card. The steel book is here and it does come with its own slip. I think all still books should be done in this manner now with with an outer slip its own sort of slip i think they're great it's a great way of doing it the age ratings can be removed so as you can see you've got spock's face there um, and you've got the uss enterprise there and you've got klingon bird of prey down that bit 
with the title of the film there but lift it up and it all comes off that all comes away so you're left with that that's your slip for it which is is great it's lovely um and your steel book that you're left with and i'm just checking it for any damage any dings any dents um and it looks good um yeah yeah it's fine it's all fine from what i can tell so let's let's take a look close up so this is the steel book here and it's embossed you got an embossed border there and you've got embossing on that sort of square looking spock face which is a bit odd looking i can't deny that um but it's it's in hand it's got some lovely blue colors in it um it's got yeah, it's just it's it's quite striking. It's quite striking, and I am wondering. I do think there's a slight little, little you can hardly see it, little indentation just there. But I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to lose sleep over that. Um, there's the spine there, and there's the back of it, like so, front and back together. Um, obviously, that's the bit where they've just blown up the. USS Enterprise um, and Kirk turns round and says my god Bones what have I done and Bones replies and says you've done what you always do you've turned death into a fighting chance to live or something along those lines very similar to that um, yes great line if I got it right it's a great line anyway um, but let's have a look at interior so interior we do get just plain discs, so that is Star Trek 3 um, on 4K, and this here is the Blu-ray, like so. And we'll have a look at those bits that come within this after, because the poster and the booklet is in there. And that's the interior of it, which is the space station, the mushroom looking one with the USS Enterprise heading into the um, towards the doors. Um, or is that when he backs out after stealing the Enterprise? What a great scene that is. Um, so let's put these discs back in for safekeeping. Now, we do have here the poster. The little poster that comes within. And it is that there. So you can see what they've done with the cover. The cover is kind of Spock's face, very much akin to what you had on on this particular poster um, a dying planet a fight for life the search for spot I like the colors very nice um, so there's the poster and then we do get quite a thin little booklet but we do get a little booklet in there like that it's not square bound it's not thick enough to be square bound um, it is approximately one two About 14 pages, 14 pages in there. Um, so obviously that's the image on the front again. So as this booklet starts off, there's not a lot of writing in it. It is literally just pictures, it's like a little picture book. Um, but then you get to information about it, about, you know, characters, cast, things like that. Other page with just pictures on. And you get a lot of production notes, very small writing, very small text there, but, you know, spills over like that. Obviously, Christopher Lloyd is in this movie. Robin Curtis played Savick. She replaced Kirstie Alley, who was in um, Star Trek II as Savick. So, yeah, so, yeah, you get that in there. You get... Your discs. Like I said, this is an Amazon exclusive one. It was only Amazon that done the poster and the booklet. Um, yes, so obviously I went to and got it from Amazon. So and there's the, the deal books slip like so. Um, probably not for everyone. Like I said, it's much better in hand than what it is out of hand. So, yeah, so I have two steel books for this 40 year old classic Star Trek movie. So for me, Star Trek The Search of Spock. Now the Star Trek films are films that 
um, I kind of, kind of semi-regularly visit. Um, I enjoy the Star Trek films. Um, uh, the original trilogy, the sorry, trilogy, the original cast films, I, I really enjoy. Um, now, on my last watch of these movies, um, Star Trek Free to Search for Spock, I would actually rate higher than Star Trek for The Voyage Home, the whale one. Now, the whale one is what a lot of people jump on in their memories. The whale one is, for me, it, well, not for me, it is it's factually, it is the easily digestible, the most accessible Star Trek film for non-Star Trek audiences, hence why most people remember it. However, on a rewatch, um, it does come across as a little bit silly in places, and Star Trek 3 has far more emotion to it, raw emotion. It's got some far more memorable scenes, like the stealing of the Enterprise, the destruction of the Enterprise, things like that. There's there's a lot to like in Star Trek 3. But it's kind of darker in tone. It's darker in tone. Thematically, it plays with darker themes. And, you know, and I can understand coming off the back of Star Trek 2, the Wrath of Khan, why people perceived it as being one of the poor Star Trek films but it's not on re-evaluation it is a a great Star Trek film um, and a great follow-up to The Wrath of Khan um, The Whale One as good as it is it's a good film don't get me wrong it's just a bit more silly in places um, some of the jokes fall flat it's dated it's incredibly dated because of where it's set and when it's set. Um, so for me, Star Trek 3 kind of out, out tops that movie. It's a good film. Very, very good film. Very strong Star Trek film in the in the sort of pantheon of Star Trek movies. So anyway, that was it. A little chat about it. So that was the opening for Star Trek 3, The Search for Spock. Um, yeah, very nice. Very nice indeed. Um, so I'm off. Um, comments down below and I shall see you on the next one. Take care all. Goodbye.